Thank you, Andrew. Yep. Yep. As uh, Andrew mentioned, uh, I am uh, Anders. Uh, I've been at uh, Umbraco for uh, about three years. I'm head of our sales uh, and partner channels. Uh, I've been visiting more than uh, 200 agencies uh, over the last uh, couple of years. Um, I'm a major friend maker. I am a major friend maker. Uh, and my colleague, uh, Jacob. Uh, Jacob, why do you have such a boring title? Uh, I don't think I have a boring title. Thank you very much, Anas. So I work as the CTO at Umbraco meaning all things technology and product related, together with my team, of course. Um, but one reason why my title is not more fun is probably I'm the funniest guy already at HQ, so it would be completely overshining everybody if I changed my title as well. So that's yeah. probably the explanation, Anas. Okay. Well, um, see, the, the thing is that uh, Jacob came up to me uh, a couple of months ago and... Uh, and talk about should we do a talk on cloud, a business-oriented uh, talk. Um, and we think it's a good idea because normally a sales director or salesperson don't speak a lot to uh, development. There's a, the two persons first away from each other. And, uh, and we have a quite business-focused CTO, and I'm also quite technique-oriented. Uh, uh, so the combination of the two of us uh, I know a lot of things uh, that have been said uh, by partners, uh, by the agencies using Umbraco Cloud. Uh, and Jacob is uh, looking to uh, improve our cloud very much to the agencies. Isn't that right, Jacob? That is right. Yeah. So uh, we talked about uh, how we could, uh, could use this talk. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that is uh, important is that we want to elaborate on, on, uh, on cloud uh, to the agencies, and we want to paint the picture of how the future looks. Uh, we think uh, we have a really good idea, and uh, proof of concept is already reached, uh, proof of scale is also, uh, but we need to grow bigger on this. We need to uh, become even better. Uh, so this is part of it. We want to make sure that you understand what the journey of Umbraco Cloud is. We will talk a lot about uh, how we see the market today. We will talk about how we see agencies. We will talk about uh, the future of Umbraco, what things you can expect uh, in the cloud. Um, we talk a lot about Umbraco CMS, but we also talk a lot about cloud. We want that to be one. It's not like we are stopping the CMS project at all. Uh, that is our core business. But the cloud is a service around it. And when we talk about cloud, a lot of people, at, le at least end clients, is thinking about hosting. But it's not just hosting. It's a lot of services that add benefits to both agencies and the end clients. Just before we got up here, we had a guy coming uh, to, uh, to ask us, uh, is this the right talk for me? Uh, I've built one project on Umbraco Cloud. And uh, we see this talk if you, uh, if you are interested in cloud, uh, if you haven't been using cloud in your job, uh, in your business, uh, either if you're an agency or an end client, uh, if you're interested in knowing more about cloud, this is the place to be. It's also the place to be if you have built something on cloud, but you're not sure if it's the way to go for you yet. If you are a power user of cloud, we have quite some agencies that has, uh, has taken in cloud and is spinning up uh, cloud size on a weekly basis, then this is also the place to be. Because we, as I talked before, we want to paint the picture of where we want to go. And we have a lot of things to do yet. But to look forward, we also have to understand the history of Umbraco uh, Cloud. And uh, with this, I've just uh, drawn a, a timeline on uh, how we actually uh, have uh, come through the last five years. 
So Ombraco Cloud was an idea uh, that uh, we got in Ombraco back in 2013. Uh, back then, there wasn't as many people in the HQ as there is now. Uh, Nils Hartwig was uh, traveling quite much uh, around talking to the community and to agencies around. And uh, he experienced that agencies needed to be more efficient. And that was the whole thing about cloud, that if we were to build a cloud service, and we could see already back then that a lot of things was going in the cloud direction. And if we should build a cloud service, it just shouldn't just be a hosted solution. We wanted to do something different about it, and we do wanted to do something that made the agencies more efficient. That was the, word, the main idea back then. Uh, in 14, the first cloud version was born. Uh, we launched it with an uh, agency plan. There was one plan fits all back then, for 89 euros. Uh, Carlsberg was one of the first uh, organizations uh, taking in on Braco uh, Cloud. And um, I'm quite sure that uh, it was uh, Nils who uh, actually um, showed uh, on Braco to uh, an audience of, uh, of the Carlsberg organization, and they were quite thrilled about the idea of on Braco Cloud. It was very early stages. He said, no, don't do it. And they said, yes, we want it. Uh, and uh, a couple of months later, they were actually building on it. They have been part of the uh, process uh, in the early starts with a lot of uh, things that we had to handle back then. Uh, but uh, today they have uh, more than uh, 500 sites running on, uh, on Ombraco Cloud. And every time they buy a new brewery somewhere, uh, it comes along with uh, five, six, seven brand sites that they need to manage. Uh, if Carlsberg is lucky, then this brewery has all these uh, five, seven sites on the same CMS. And if they are even luckier, it's on the same hosting environment. Today, they use Ombraco Cloud. They have it centralized uh, controls. They have new versions uh, rolled out. Uh, and the local brewery, if they have a local design agency, they can even invite them to do the customization on the look and feel. 2015, uh, DBU launches their club CMS, uh, the Daily uh, Football Association. I'll come to, back to that case study uh, later on. Uh, in 16, um, we decided that on Braco as a service, that was the name it was born with back then, wasn't the right word. We wanted to call it On Braco Cloud. Uh, internally, we actually called it US. Um, and it was uh, the right way to, uh, to change the name to On Braco Cloud because it, uh, people started to understand what it was even more. We realized that uh, back then we had the agency plans for uh, 89 euros. We changed it to two different versions, having a very simple starter plan for 25 euros, one environment, uh, easy to get started, to get some sites out uh, running there. Uh, and we had an advanced uh, professional plan that had all the functionalities and multi-environments uh, uh, for 400 euros. Um, all along this time, we used what we call Ombraco Courier to power um, Ombraco Cloud uh, to power the deployment. And we also realized that Courier wasn't stable enough on this. So it was rebuilt and it took a lot of manpower, man hours in uh, the D team. Uh, and it was uh, rebuilt totally into a new uh, system, uh, a new uh, piece of software called uh, Deploy. That took over and solved a lot of uh, support issues uh, on that. Also, in 17, uh, we had the first enterprise agreement, a big uh, financial uh, company in uh, the Netherlands, PGGM, uh, enters with an uh, enterprise agreement. They have three web teams working with uh, Ombraco down there. In 18, we launch what is called Ombraco Latch, and uh, that is one of the things that we keep improving. Uh, when Google had this, that you had to have SSL uh, certificates on your uh, website, uh, either, uh, otherwise it would look insecure. Uh, we uh, automate this, and we partnered up with Let's Encrypt, 
And as soon as you attach that domain, it's encrypted. We also had a, uh, a customer called TCD Player, and in, uh, in uh, 18, they, uh, they launch, or not at once, but over time, they reach uh, thousands of different sites running on cloud. Uh, and here in uh, lately, we just launched our V8 also on cloud. So that is the past, and a lot of things happened over the past. So, uh, if we start looking uh, forward as well, um, well, as just uh, talked about this, about uh, cloud, a lot of things is going cloud. And also, if we look at the history of just using a, a cloud hosted service, then uh, I have this, uh, this um, scale where you can actually see today, this year, uh, 2019, we just reached that traditional hosting is less than cloud-based hosting. Uh, so the technology uh, states that this is also the way to go. But we are not just hosting, we are a lot of other things. In my journey visiting a lot of different agencies, I have seen very successful agencies. I've seen uh, agencies that live their own life uh, and don't grow very much. I've seen uh, what things work for agencies, and uh, some of the key po uh, points that we see in successful agencies are, uh, are some of these. We see that successful agencies work more efficient than others. They are quite fast in, in their project, quite fast in, uh, to the point where they actually start creating value for their clients. The point where they start coding on the custom projects is quite important. We see that time to market is important. You have clients that want to go live very fast. They are always on a deadline. You are always on a deadline. They need to spin up uh, things uh, immediately. And when they have a mindset or an idea of, we need to shout out this, they want to be live tomorrow. Clients also want predictability. They want to have a good agency to partner up with. They want to be sure that they can actually uh, count on what uh, amount of hours is spent on a project. Uh, they want predictability. And then, of course, when you are going on a project, that's quite important that you are, uh, your speed of delivery is, uh, is uh, up to date as well. Security and reliability um, is uh, quite important. It's uh, just one of those things that has to be there. It's, uh, it's not one of the things that you, you speak about. It's like service. Do you have a good uh, customer service? Yes, we all do that. This is also one of the things, it just has to be there. Um, and this is what some of the things that we want to point out with the uh, with Umbraco uh, cloud to help you with the, some of these things. And Jacob, could you tell us a bit about the philosophy behind Umbraco cloud? You know I can, <coughs> because that's what's coming up next. Woo! Uh, just uh, out of interest, uh, with a show of hands, how many of you here today are already using Umbraco cloud? Fantastic, quite a few of you. Uh, how many are here because you're considering? All right. I won't ask who is here and won't do it. That wouldn't necessarily make a lot of sense. Um, so uh, when Anas talked about the strength of us uh, combined giving this talk today and the work that we do together on a daily basis, uh, just on my part, uh, my background is uh, back in the days with software development, but also uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, cloud-based uh, product and services. That's basically all that I've done. And, um, and also uh, building software as a service. So believe it when I say that, that it's really important for me not just to deliver a great CMS from Umbraco as a company, but also to deliver uh, great software as a service tools uh, and, and Umbraco Cloud being one of them. Um, so this is why this, this uh, talk today and, and our uh, combined work uh, is very exciting for us and, and, and makes a lot, of, a lot of sense. So when we talk about Umbraco Cloud, and this is what's up on our website as well. We want to give you cloud-based CMS 
that lets you focus on the fun stuff. So that basically means taking away all the things that are in your way for doing the things you actually set out to do uh, for yourself or with your customers and partners using the CMS. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about what does that mean. So if we look at uh, complexity of uh, operations, meaning all the things needed in terms of running uh, uh, websites or anything else in production in IT, there's quite a lot of things to it. Of course, running uh, one website in a container somewhere can be pretty easily set up, and if that's your game, that's fine. But even if you do that, there is still some maintenance to it that you know you have to do, and at some point, some things will break or whatever, and you need to figure out what do you do about that. Um, if you have a bigger setup of lots of sites, lots of customers, then it becomes even more tricky. So if we look at some of these uh, parts of running services, in production, there's, there's stuff about cost management, there's stuff about backup and recovery, monitoring all the services that you use. What do you do if something goes wrong in terms of incident management? What about the technology itself? So whatever you launch it with doesn't stay still, or Braco doesn't stay still, how do I move forward from there? Integrations with other services, configuration management of the services or service that I'm using, security as we mentioned, and so on. Tons of different areas that you need to know about if you're serious about running these projects in real life and serious about giving good service to the end uh, users and end customers. And these are just areas, if we're talking about you utilizing uh, services for the most part uh, for, for, for doing this kind of stuff. If you have a bigger setup and you maybe have some more complex lower level stuff um, on, on server level, virtual servers, or, or even on hardware level, well then there's more stuff added on top of it in terms of patch management, uh, software and platform maintenance, more detailed disaster recovery when some machine sets out or whatever that might be. And how much of your setup, <coughs> back to cost management, how much of your setup are you even utilizing? So this landscape pretty quickly becomes big and there's a lot of time and efforts, money and expertise that you need to do all these things in a good way. And that's, of course, why software as a service comes in and, and starts to make sense, because you could, instead of focusing on all of this, focus on what you were starting to do, building a project for your customers with the CMS, which is our focus. And to be honest, all of you that are developers, do you really think this is fun doing? Do you like doing these things? Or do you want it to be handled? Some like it, but it's a special breed. Then you are DevOps. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all to do with the complexity, of course. And, and it's it, for the same reason that, that we don't build our own issue track or, or a, a document platform or whatever. We want to focus on the stuff that's our business and then uh, get good services from others whose business it is to deliver these kind of things. So that's, of course, what we're trying to do with Embarco Cloud. So some of the philosophies behind it. It's a service-first approach. Sometimes when I, when I talk to partners, we, we quickly end up talking about hosting or machines. That's actually not the conversation that we would like to have, and I'll get back to that in a bit. But for us, it's an end-to-end -end service. So it's about the user experience of doing all the things that it takes from spinning up a new project, getting all these things in motion, all the work and collaboration that happens to the end result being delivered, and of course, running it in production. And uh, as I think Anna's already mentioned, this increased efficiency for agency is part of the philosophy of it. So the way that it's structured is focusing a lot on the agencies having a lot of projects and saying, how can we make things better? And how can we make things more efficient in that area? And, and in, into that context, it's integrating seamlessly with the users of Embarco Cloud, but also uh, the workflows that exist, which can be very different uh, and, and on different complex. Uh, complexity levels, but uh, but nonetheless, those are important for how do you how do you improve uh, the speed of delivery and the workflows for those using the platform. And then, of course, um, Ombraco CMS is also a product of ours, even though it's an open source platform. We still uh, we still have uh, a lot of opportunity to empower the CMS when we also do the part that has to do with the, with production hosting and all the services around it. So we have an opportunity to get both platforms integrated well with each other and giving a good experience um, for that. And then no nonsense hosting, and I call it that because, as I said, if it works, then that's not the conversation. And there's no reason why hosting should be the conversation. No, we want to talk about efficiency and getting good results and building great products. End value for the end customers. 
Hosting is just um, a part of that. Easy deployment of content and code has been, as Anas explained from the beginning, uh, part of the philosophy of Umbraco Cloud and part of why it started as a tool to give great experience for moving between multiple environments, both with content uh, and with code. And of course, that also includes supporting multiple environments to support workflows between development and staging uh, and live uh, and whatever tailors that need. Yes. And of course, the last one I think I have on here is automatic uh, upgrades. So a, a big part of Umbraco Cloud today is making it easier to move the, the CMS technology forward. As we talked about, you have to manage all that stuff. Uh, on cloud, you get automated patch management. So whenever we do a patch release, you get automatically upgraded. When we do minor releases, there's tools for you in cloud to do the minor upgrade yourself as a service where you get feedback on, on how to go through the process and what all the tools needed in order to have a good experience with that. All right, so talking a little bit more about this as a service concepts, and some of you are familiar with this, but there's, there's typically uh, three layers that are talked about. It's infrastructure as a service, it's platform as a service, and it's software as a service. And I'll just quickly go through what that means to try and also explain what kind of services on Rocco Cloud actually, because it's not just software as a service. So if we start with infrastructure as a service, this is the lower level. The, these are machines, be they uh, actual hardware or virtual machines, um, and infrastructure that you get access to. You need some of the lower level stuff. Now, Umbraco Cloud does not offer a lot of things in the infrastructure as a service uh, part. The closest we get is uh, the dedicated options we have for hosting. Some of our customers are on dedicated setups. You, that doesn't mean you get more access to the lower levels, but it do mean that you get uh, some isolated options. So that's the, basically the closest we get to this area. So the next step is platform as a service. So this is the abstractions on top of the infrastructure part. So this can be operation systems, it can be environments, it can be web servers, anything that gives you more tools on top of the infrastructure itself. Um, and, and again, as I had on the other one here, some of the, some of the big players in this area is Amazon Web Services and then Microsoft Azure. And if we look at some of the things that are related to this part in Umbraco Cloud, then it's the multiple environments that we give you access to. It's the databases that are part of this, which you also have direct access to. We have storage, uh, we have shared code bases uh, and things like that which means that you get pretty low level access to some of the things that are actually powering and running on Braco Cloud, and you're able to configure and change a lot of that. So for that reason, on Braco Cloud is also platform as a service. We share code bases with you. We, we share databases with you, and we, we host whatever the end result is of the work that we've been doing and the work that you are doing at the end of the day. And then at the SaaS, <coughs> the SaaS layer, so, so this is the abstraction level that most of us know. Uh, there could be many examples of this, Office uh, 365, Slack, Salesforce, whatever, software that's presented online as a service and you use that as a tool. And of course, Umbraco is uh, a SaaS tool. It is an online platform, so, so in the very nature, it is a set, SaaS uh, offering. But it's also uh, uh, some of the parts that are within, um, automatic uh, upgrades, Umbraco Latch, as Anas mentioned. Um, the content deployments, all the user and project management. Uh, we offer APIs that you can interact uh, with the system and so on. So these are all the layers uh, SaaS-wise. So, so with that picture, basically Umbaco Cloud is somewhere in between or a bit of both in terms of uh, a SaaS offering and, and platform as a service because it is a SaaS product, but we give you much more lower level access than what you normally uh, experience with the SaaS offering. So that's where uh, the Umbraco Cloud uh, sits in that landscape. And now you kind of understand why we started calling it Umbraco as a service. But it's not just that good of a marketing word, really. Which why was Umbraco Cloud born? Yes. Yeah. So uh, now uh, I'm going to talk a uh, bit about how Umbraco Cloud is used, how we see it being used uh, out uh, in the real world. Uh, agencies uh, use it in various ways as agencies are very different. We see also uh, that uh, end clients is using it in uh, different ways. And 
we do also see that uh, at, that people using a Braco cloud becomes quite um, creative on their uh, usage. So obviously, a lot of uh, you know about uh, different uh, uh, web projects. Uh, it is used uh, to to a lot of different type of sites. It's used for for of course uh, basic websites, uh, corporate sites. Portals, uh, web, uh, web shops, uh, commerce, uh, marketing sites, all kind of things on the normal basis that you could uh, think of. Um, we have some, uh, some agencies that has uh, pushed it uh, to its limits and really tested out how they can uh, incorporate it in their workflow, uh, testing uh, with different things. Uh, and uh, I think uh, actually you, uh, Lauren, uh, your agency has been working quite much with uh, Umbraco Cloud and uh, we have a little story from one of your colleagues here. The types of sites that we're building on Umbraco Cloud are for small and mid-sized organizations, universities, private companies, e-commerce, and marketing sites. We also love to use Abraco Cloud for internal research projects, proof of concept, and demo sites. The ease in which we can create and delete sites makes it faster and more reliable than if we were to set up these sites on our internal infrastructure. Umbraco Cloud has largely solved an upgrade dilemma. We tell our clients it's best to always be running the latest release version, but the effort and cost to keep each client up to date is significant. Umbraco Cloud allows us to pass through the auto upgrade feature as a cost savings as well as best practice. Umbraco are very careful with the upgrades. They ask before upgrading major minor versions, and it's been really great. We've been pleasantly surprised with the continuing evolution of features that come along with each upgrade because it makes working with the cloud even easier and less time consuming. Another key benefit we gain from using Umbraco Cloud is in regard to workflow. The structured flow in Umbraco Cloud is intuitive for developers. And the use of web standard technology, such as GitHub, PowerShell, etc., makes it straightforward to integrate Umbraco Cloud into our existing process. We highly recommend Umbraco Cloud and use it internally. We think it will become the must use choice for all clients, large and small. Braco Cloud is uh, a different way uh, of working than with uh, your traditional uh, ways and you have to uh, maybe adopt a bit. Uh, but the things it actually solves, uh, relieves you from a lot of uh, things out there that you, uh, you don't want to, uh, to handle and it also makes you more efficient. Um, all of these things talked about here, basic websites, uh, web shops is uh, things that of course, it can handle that. It's supposed to be able to handle that because that's, that's the basics of uh, doing uh, rep projects. But where we see uh, the more creative uh, projects and uh, creating use of uh, Umbraco Cloud is uh, where agencies uh, start by using some of the features, some of the services that we build in Umbraco Cloud, such as the baseline. Uh, a lot of you uh, that are spinning up uh, multiple uh, web projects has your own uh, kind of uh, baseline starter kits, uh, foundation, they, it, they are called very different things. The way that you always do your things. Every agency, every uh, development has their own uh, baseline or way of doing things and they are different from each other. The thing is that with a baseline, you can actually do these things. You can build it in one place and you can start a project out from that, which saves you a lot of time. And every time you have a little thing that you want to change in these, you can do it in your baseline. Uh, and if you do your baseline right, then you can actually uh, push that to every site out there built on that baseline, uh, which is an upgrade feature. We also see that uh, agencies are starting to, uh, to make some services for their clients, building campaign engines, uh, because a lot of these sites where they get an idea out there, um, they need to be up running fast. Maybe just a one-pager they need, but 
when they enter you, if, if you're an agency and you have a good client, obviously you want to work on some of the bigger projects. You want the projects where there's a lot of hours involved. And you tie up your resources in different things, but when they get this one idea, we want a campaign site with this message, it has to be now. There's not a lot of time in that, but you have to do it because they're a good client. You really don't want to mess with this because, I mean, you're more tied up to the bigger projects and you have to deliver them at times. But these small projects, wouldn't that be nice to just make a tool for your clients where you can actually hand it over to them and says, push the button, build it yourself. And this is the campaign engine idea that we see more and more agencies are spinning up because if you have a certain organization out there where they have a marketing department, a sales department, and uh, the sales department get the idea, we want this and we want it now. Then the marketing department can spin it up themselves if you made the build and they can just customize some few things. And you don't need to actually handle that. Maybe it's just a project for like 20 to 50 hours. You don't care about those either way. So why don't build it on, on Braco Cloud and hand it over to the client and empower themselves? So if we look at uh, some of the different things also built out there is, uh, I mentioned the, uh, the Danish Football Association. Um, DBU, uh, as it's called here, is uh, they have uh, a lot of sites. They have, of course, the national sites uh, also running in Umbraco Cloud. But the Danish Football Association serve a lot of small football clubs around Denmark. It is our national sport. I mean, we are not doing major things. We still watch uh, the final in 1992 when we won the European Championship. And pretty much every time there's a, a, a European Championship, we see that football match. We won through Germany back in 2092. I think I watched it six times, and we still brag about it. But the point is, it's our national sports. We have a lot of small football clubs all around, uh, and uh, a lot of communities built around uh, small villages. Their football club is the, the thing they go to. There might not be a lot of members, there might just be a hundred people there or something. They can't afford to run a website with live scores uh, integrated with uh, uh, different things uh, where they can put up uh, all these things. So the DBU made a baseline with all the features that you would love as a football club. And then they call it a club CMS and they can buy it as a subscription where they can customize the look and feel and they get all these features in and they provide it for 400 football clubs today. And every time there's a change in an integration with live service or something, they do it in the baseline and they push it to all the football sites. So a great way of thinking of using a Braco Cloud that way. Another uh, client that we have is uh, TCG Player. I mentioned it in the history. They uh, exceeded uh, a thousand projects. I think they are actually closer to about four. 1,400 sites yep. today. Yep. Now, TC player, T, TCD player, anybody know TCD player? One, yeah. How many knows uh, Pokemon Go? Yeah, the, you know the game uh, on the phone. There's actually, it was born like Pokemon cards, physical cards. And um, you might say, okay, cards, really? But this is a huge, thing. And they, they make all kinds of different Pokemon cards in physics uh, that is traded throughout players among uh, the whole world. There's a huge community for that. And there's, uh, there's uh, a lot of people that are collecting cards and there's really, really rare cards between these. And these are sold for a fortune. Um, so what TCG's player um, was doing was that some of the, the big collectors, they were offered shops. Uh, they can uh, sell with us, and they can just, by push a button, they can get their own shop built on Umbraco Cloud. They get a full Pokemon card shop where they can get all the information from the back office, from TCG player, and they can just uh, display their own cards, and they are selling them. 
So TCG player, they are not talking about a thousand or two thousand sites. They are talking about when they reach five thousand and ten thousand sites of this. And every time a, a collector comes in here and says, I have so many cars, I want to sell them to all other collectors. They reach this site, they push a button, and TCG player uses the API that we provide through Umbraco Cloud, and they spin up automated web shops already uh, ready to, uh, to put in their own cards. Uh, and again, it's built on a baseline feature, so the automatic updates are rolling out, and uh, whenever they have an, uh, an update, they do it through the baselines. Um, I mentioned the campaign sites. Time to market uh, is quite important. Uh, we, had a, uh, we have a Danish uh, company called uh, Coop, uh, and they had an idea uh, where they uh, wanted to create a site quite fast because of a, uh, a law that came through the, uh, the Danish government. I have a case study on that here. Take a look. A brand new campaign website from brief to launch in 48 hours. Over the past few years, Co-op, the largest retailer of consumer goods in Denmark, launched almost 60 Umbraco cloud sites. A day came when they needed yet another cloud site, a site that was launched in less than 48 hours. The story behind. Co-op strongly supports the Danish government's ambition to have a smoke-free generation by 2030. However, Denmark is far from reaching this ambition. Every day, 40 young adults start smoking across Denmark. Co-op considers this 40 too many. It is Co-op's ambition to hide the tobacco in all of Co-op's Danish stores. Nevertheless, Co-op believes that together people stand the strongest and has therefore made a proposal to introduce a nationwide ban. A proposal that needs 50,000 signatures to be considered at the parliament. A proposal for which a brand new website site was needed. And this is where Umbraco Cloud comes into the story. Speed was a big obstacle they had to manage, as they had to launch the campaign site fast. Co-op knew that leveraging on their Umbraco Cloud baseline would give them a head start, as it would allow them to reuse components that were cohesive with Co-op's visual identity. Co-op acquired the domain, set up the new project on Umbraco Cloud from the baseline, and had a shell up and running within a few hours. Here and after, they started developing and designing the landing page. Content flow ensured that both developers and editors simultaneously were able to complete their individual tasks. Glenn Nesgaard is digital project manager at Co-op Marketing. He says, Umbraco Cloud provides a high degree of freedom in terms of working with code and content simultaneously. All of this combined dramatically decreased our time to market. And not to forget, Umbraco Cloud is considerably cheaper than other comparable alternatives out there. The website was built and launched in a record time, less than 48 hours. So if you were to build a website from idea to launch in 48 hours, you would have to hurry. But if you actually had built a campaign engine for your client, they could do it themselves. And to be honest, there's not a lot of hours and business in, in something like this. So why don't you empower your clients instead? Now, this is what uh, Umbraco Cloud is used for today, uh, but uh, we have a lot of ambitions uh, on behalf of our partners, and uh, we also look ahead. Uh, so, I'm quite sure that there's a lot of you guys that would like to know what's in the pipe and what we would like to see in the future. And that's the illustration. That's how the future looks like mm. on Umbraco Cloud. Um, so um, the journey has just begun. It says, and and this is uh, this is not just a, a statement that we put out there. Um, we've come a long way with Umbraco Cloud today and the whole Umbraco as a service concept. And when you hear these uh, examples of how this platform is utilized today, 
well, then it's clear that we are now talking thousands of sites, and that has given us lots of learnings about both how to run all of this in a big setup in production, but also on all the needs that are there for the teams and the people using Umbraco Cloud. So we've gathered a lot of learnings from this. So for us, Umbraco Cloud today is just the start of the journey that we are taking and the philosophy and ambition that we had to begin with on what should Umbraco Cloud be. Um, so why should you be part of this journey if you're not already, or even if you is, why is it a good idea to be part of this? So, as I said, we service thousands of Umbraco websites. So the decisions that we make on the platform in terms of hosting, but also the tools that we build, are based on learnings from all of those. And the tools that you need for your project is most likely not unique to you. A lot of the problems that you have are shared with other teams and other companies out there, also using Umbraco Cloud or also having the same workflows as you, looking for the same solutions. So we gather a lot of feedback and we can see the patterns in that and say, if we put efforts in here, then we will generate a lot of value for a lot of you guys using Umbraco Cloud. Um, we know the full stack of Umbraco. As I mentioned before, we do, of course, both do the CMS and Umbraco Cloud. And, and this means that we have all the tools and all the knowledge that we need within our team to make the right decisions on how to set this up and make a good platform to service all these sites and to build the right tools for you guys. So we believe that we have the knowledge uh, to make this a success. And then an, an important point here is that we continue to invest both in the CMS but also the cloud platform to give the best individual experience with the CMS but also the cloud and then combined. So, so when we're talking on Braco Cloud, it is also the CMS. It's the whole thing end to end, and we treat it as one platform, one product. When we talk about on Braco Cloud, again, we are our own biggest customer, and I say that in quotation because, of course, all the projects is running on on Braco Cloud is not ours; it's your projects. But when we make changes or plan changes for the CMS, or we take pull requests in on the open source platform, we get the immediate learnings and feedback, both in testing, but also when it gets into produ uh, to production, sorry, from these thousands of sites that we're hosting. So if we're making a mistake, then you can be sure that we will see it as one of the firsts out there, because it will hit us right in the face and we'll be able to make corrections right away. So not only does it serve us well that we are building the CMS for building the cloud service, but it also works the other way around for building the cloud service and all the feedback we get there, it strengthened uh, the CMS. So that's something that is really helpful for us in building the CMS uh, for the future as well. So these are some of, the, uh, some of the reasons why we believe it's a good idea to be part of this journey and why we uh, are very happy about the journey that we set out to. So we talk about the philosophy, <clears throat> what it really boils down to, also the fun part we talked about. We want Umbraco Cloud to be the right tool for the right job, but it's not going to be uh, one tool, one size fits all. So uh, what we have today, also with the examples that Anas gave, we have different kind of tools on the shelves for doing baselines, or we have tools for doing the upgrade flows and so on. But you'll see us add more tools as we move forward, because that was just the beginning of it. We are out talking to a lot of our partners and a lot of you that are using Umbraco Cloud, getting feedback on what are the good parts, but also what are, the, what are the things that doesn't work well for you? Where do you get stuck in your workflow? Um, what kind of tools do you have to build on the side? So we want to take as much of that off your uh, shoulders and say you can still focus on the project and on your end customers needs for building a great site. We will handle uh, and give you tools that you can use um, for these kind of challenges. So that's what it's about. And again, that's back to the service first approach. We keep looking for ways that we can improve the service and empower you if you choose to use Umbraco Cloud for your projects. So let's talk a little bit about what those future potentials could be. A lot of the feedback we get is that the multi-environment setup on Umbraco Cloud is great but a lot of you have uh, external build tools that you're running uh, on the side of Umbraco Cloud. And today, the integration between those two worlds is not uh, optimal. 
So it often means that agencies are building things on the side and then combining the two with Umbaku Cloud. So in the future, going forward, we would like to provide more tools for continuous integration in general, saying it should be easier on Umbaku Cloud to hook it up with either this, uh, the setup that you already are running through integrations and APIs, but also in terms of what we can provide internally for supporting continuous integration as part of our flow within the platform. So this is an important part um, to support all the, especially all the uh, developer teams sitting out there working uh, in parallel, uh, working together. Continuous integrations is such a big, big thing of almost all teams today. So we want to see that play a bigger part on Umbaku Cloud. Related to that, of course, is automated testing and validation. So part of that build, build pipeline is all kinds of validation tools that you want to run. So when you make changes uh, and you commit changes uh, or create new feature branches, whatever it is, you want validation of all the stuff that you have set up testing-wise. And we want to help more in that area, again, integrating with the tools that you already have, but also looking at how can we provide better tooling for these validation steps. Because it makes sense, we have the multiple environments, you move between sometimes local to development, through staging and to live. And while moving through these steps, it makes sense for us to help you and assist you in more validation than what we do today. Talked about feature branching. Um, we have an ambition of supporting feature branching for Embarco Cloud. Again, making it easier for the teams that are building different features or at least using different branches for the development flow that they have so that they can switch between the development flows in the same setup on Oracle Cloud and testing different things. Also getting, uh, so when you need to get um, external people uh, or not people on a development team uh, testing and trying, it could be people outside of the company trying your stuff out, being able to use the Oracle Cloud environments more uh, uh, than you can today for switching between all these development tracks that you have. This makes a lot of sense and, and something we hear a lot and, and one of the features we really look forward to. Um, then content delivery services is another example. So, so we host Ombraco um, in Ombraco Cloud, but we also look at how can we then expand on that from a service perspective, giving you better uh, performance, better services, uh, better tools again when you're running your cloud sites. And examples of that is uh, uh, supporting content delivery networks, which was mentioned in the keynote. Um, another example of that, which was also mentioned, is taking some of the searching that's happening today on a low-level uh, file system within Umbraco, taking some of that out and using cloud services for that instead instead, and then combining that for better uh, functionality and better performance um, for those sites running on Braco, on Braco Cloud. Um, and again, extended support for large teams. We have some of our customers running hundreds and thousands of websites. They, of course, have big teams working on this. They need to do the feature branching, but they also need to do collaboration. A lot of them are working on the same project at the same time. Just as that can be a challenge in the CMS, this can also be a challenge on the other parts of the cloud service. Um, so this is another uh, area that's really important for us to strengthen and make sure that Umbraco Cloud works well for the team structure that you have, whatever it might be, and whatever size it might be. So you get a good experience and you feel like the tool is empowering you instead of being in the way where you have to manually uh, communicate or set something up to make sure that you don't get into some pitfalls where the system doesn't work well anymore. So this has to be something that the system supports you with. And then, um, again, when you have one project, it's pretty easy to overview. But we're starting to seeing people then get into the tens, the hundreds, and so on. And then project overview is no longer that easy. Sure, we're running them all on Baco Cloud. We're running them in production. And, and you don't have to concern yourselves too much with that. But you still have a lot of projects. And you need to know more about how are my individual project doing. Uh, both from uh, performance perspectives, maybe from some of the testing perspectives that we talked about, um, or just in general, if there's some kind of problems with some of them, um, how can I get a better overview of that? So we want to empower um, the project overview and the project dashboards and all those tools going forward to say, we give you more tooling and more overview and, and more options for saying what's happening to all these projects I have. Which ones should I pay attention to? Which ones are doing good? Which ones uh, do I need to take action? 
So that's going to be a big part of it um, as well going forward. Yeah. I think that was the last one I had yep. on the list. Um, just push the button, change the slide. I will. So um, we know we are not there yet. We have a lot of things to do. We are on the right track. We're quite sure of that. Uh, if we look at what we see in a future agency uh, and a future successful agency, we talked about uh, efficiency. We talked about time to market, uh, predictability, uh, speed of delivery, and security. And these are some of the things that we want with Umbraco Cloud, is that, uh, that we want to help you with this. Uh, we are working on a lot of stuff still, but we can also see that, uh, that uh, we need your help, we need your input for a lot of these things. And as, uh, as Jacob uh, mentioned, this doesn't only help ourselves because we are our, our own customer. We learn a lot about our own CMS running a cloud and hosting a lot of the different sites. And uh, this, in combination with all of you using Ombraco and Ombraco Cloud um, is quite important as well. We are ambitious on behalf of our partners, and this is part of the journey. So the question is, or not the question, but when do you want to be part of this journey as well? It's not like we are going to stop having a uh, open source uh, CMS, but we are also just offering it as a, as a service. And this will increase more and more. And there will be also both opportunity or both uh, options going forward. Uh, and we also know that there is certain projects out there that is not suitable for Umbraco Cloud. But we are working on getting as many involved in this. Yeah, and then we just want to make the whole Umbraco experience even better. Creating an environment where end clients feel secure, they have the feeling of always being up to date. You have the tools. You can spend the time where you actually add value to your projects. And we work through partners. We work through you. I think that was pretty much what we had. That was all. And we also have uh, some, uh, some time for some questions, yep. I think. Yep, we do. And now is the time where you can actually ask Jacob, when will this feature be released? Yes, any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yep, if we have, yep, we have some questions. Hi. So um, the talk about the transparency and communication and the uh, stuff like that, will there be something for that for the cloud so we can know what's going on and uh, also contribute to with suggestions and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So part of uh, the roadmap stuff I showed uh, at the keynote is going to be publicly available through uh, the dot, uh, dot com site. And, and on that roadmap, you'll also start to see more of these uh, cloud initiatives popping up. So some of them, when they're out on the next or later track, will be uh, on a bigger abstraction level. We will know less about exactly how it's going to end up, but that's also where we will start to collect feedback. So then we will, through our product communication, the blocks that we do, potentially the RFCs could work as a format as well for cloud. We don't know that yet. We just started testing it out for yeah. the CMS. Um, but but uh, safe to say that we would love to get the same feedback. Um, we do try to talk to as many of our partners as possible, and we do expect to also travel around and uh, engage uh, with partners in terms of uh, early stage uh, ideas, mock-ups, suggestions um, on how to solve these things. Because a lot of these things, again, come from feedback already. So, so we want to, of course, take that feedback, come back with suggestions, but we are not the ones that know if that's the right fit at the end of the day. It's those using Umbraco Cloud on a daily basis. So, so although I can't tell you exactly what the format will be, I think it will be a variety of different ways. Uh, we certainly have the same ambition in terms of transparency and collaboration when it comes to Umbraco Cloud. Uh, even though that it's not an open source platform in itself, it doesn't mean we don't want to collaborate on what it does because we want it to provide all this value that we talked about here today. 
So absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, a bit loud. I guess the microphone works. Uh, one question about baseline, um, and don't mind my, mind my voice. <laughs> Caught a cold, I think. Um, is it true that I can still customize a uh, if I spawn a new website based on a baseline? Can I still customize its features, or is it like a literal duplicate? Can any of you answer? We can. So, so the baseline yeah. itself, it works like a master setup. Yeah. So it's something that you base your, uh, your site off of. But then once you've done that, then you have all the changes, uh, all the chances, sorry, to customize the site itself afterwards. Then it basically functions as, as any other site uh, on Umbraco Cloud. But the power of that setup is that once you want to make changes to the master template that you use to, to spin this up, you can make those changes in your master setup and then you can push them out to all these, how many uh, sites you ended up uh, setting up as children of this master. So you can, you can use this push flow, but you can still alter and change the individual one and give power to different people who need to do different things content-wise on the, on the individual side. Okay, great. Uh, can I ask one follow-up question, perhaps? Uh, what if, let's say, the baseline has, ver uh, has features A and B and I spawn a new website based on it? And for whatever reason, I remove feature A, and I add an, a feature C, right? But then the baseline updates uh, feature A. Yep. How does cloud handle it? Because I would not want feature the new feature A to be pushed again to the site that just removed it, I think. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah. I, I might not be able to answer that 100%, but, but when you push the baseline out, that's basically saying the changes I have on the baseline uh, are the ones I want to take uh, precedence on the child side. But there are occasions where the push itself will not make sense, so where it's not, uh, where it, there will be some kind of conflict, meaning that it, it, it doesn't make sense to push it out, it's not able to because there's some conflict between the two, and then you will get notified saying that, that this, uh, this push is not possible to do at this point, you need to make corrections before that makes yeah, okay. sense. Excellent. And I guess uh, if there's more of those technical questions, we have a cloud lab right okay. out here where the, uh, our specialists, both developers and supporters are sitting, and you can go ask them anything and they'll show you how to actually work with it. Absolutely. And, and one thing we forgot to say, of course, is that uh, for those of you that are here to figure out if you want to use Umbraco Cloud, you can take a free trial of Umbraco Cloud. You can just go to our website, umbraco.com, and sign up with your email, and then you'll get a cloud site uh, right away that you can start using. And you can do that through this conference in the Cloud Lab as well. They can help you set it up. You can also go there uh, with your trial and, and get some feedback and help on, on how to get started. So that's a really good opportunity if you haven't done it yet. Um, to, uh, set up a trial or go out there and get them to help you set up a trial because that will help you answer some of the questions you might have in the early phases. Uh, but but uh, during this conference, you'll be able to get that hands-on, face-to-face help from both the developers and our support team out there in CloudLab. Thank you. Do you plan sec setting up on Braco Cloud on other Azure regions? Uh, yeah, so... so Currently, Umbraco Cloud is only served from, uh, from Europe. Um, we do plan to expand that to support other regions. Um, I don't have any timeline for exactly when that will happen, but uh, the first step you can see of that is our engagement with the content delivery networks. So while that may not be a, another region-based hosting, it will give global distribution of the content that are cast through this uh, CDN layer so it will give you the performance gains, at least, from being served from a local region. So that's our first step mm -hmm. uh, into expanding on that. But we do plan, of course, to expand uh, from Europe to, to yeah. US and other places um, as soon as possible, because it makes a lot of sense, of course. We have to. OK, thank you. Uh, don't know how close I need to be. Um, I just want to say, for firstly, um, thank you for the for the lower end um, package. I think it's 30 euros or something. It's, it's really good value for money, and it allows us to pass the savings on to our customers who are. I mean, I'm a, I'm a project owner, a, a company owner, but also a developer, and I think we've got 10 on cloud now, and it is really popular, especially for the cost um, and what you do get for that. So I just want to say thank you for for offering that level of of scale. Um, but also, uh, you knew you knew going to get the question, so. When can we expect feature branch? Yeah. 
So there's a reason why I didn't put a date up on the slide, is because I don't have a date today, unfortunately. Um, we've done a lot of work on Umbraco Cloud, but that is one of the top things up there in terms of what's going to happen next. As soon as we know more about it, we will be communicating about it and putting stuff out on our website. I can't give you a date today, unfortunately. Uh, but rest assured that, that it is one of the, the top candidates for what happens next on cloud, because we get that feedback almost every time we are out talking to uh, customers using Umbraco Cloud today. Thank you. And I think one more question, which may be for the, for the guys over the road. But um, one of the most annoying things for us, I think, is, is when you spin up a new site and you have to have like a repo from you, but then another repo for any custom code that we do. Um, is there any view on improving that? Just yeah. It gets very, very yeah. messy, very, very Yeah, I, I don't think I have that on the list, but improving on the whole uh, code base repository sharing and the way that we use Git is also one of the things that we are looking at. Um, can we perhaps even make it possible to include your own uh, GitHub accounts or, or whatever could make sense in that setup. But we certainly acknowledge that today you sometimes have to circumvent what's, what's set up to, to make it work for your team. Uh, and that plays right into some of the challenges that we want to improve. So, so yeah, absolutely we are aware of that one as well. This one over here. Hi. So. Um, Touching on what Mabel just said there as well. So the Umbraco starter plan level, like, um, yeah, agree, great price, price plan. Um, it's a good point for us. One of the biggest, um, probably, caveats and annoyances, possibly, is that it's on shared infrastructure. Is mm -hmm. that right? So recently um, had a production website that was experiencing trouble or downtime. Spoke to support, and they were great. Really, really impressed with the support stuff. But it was a noisy neighbor within our shared instance that was causing the issue. Yeah. Is there anything we can do about that? Is there any plans for you guys to help manage that? Because obviously yep. in, in production, that's, that's potentially Ob causes issues. Of course, yeah. So that's a great example of something you should not have to worry about and never get in touch with support with in the first place. Uh, we do have a lot of automation in terms of the shared infrastructure that we do to, uh, to make alterations and change things around depending on how each site is doing and, and what kind of grouping should be done. Um, and the noisy neighbor, when you hear that from us, uh, from a support perspective, is because there was someone else uh, in the proximity of the infrastructure you were using who were taking up a uh, uh, considerable amount of, of resources which they were not supposed to do. We do have some automation to handle that, but we're also making some improvements to that automation, uh, in particular these days, um, to get rid of that ever being something that you would have to reach out on because it still happens once in a while that someone uh, feels that they get stuck and it's not uh, improved fast enough from us from an automatic perspective. Although we, we are aware of it, sometimes we don't respond fast enough. Um, but we want to get all of that out of the way so any noise neighbor handling is handled fast enough so it's not a concept we at all uh, have to talk about because it's not, it's not a value concept <laughs> to be talking about. It's not great for you, it's not great for us, it's just something that we need to, to get uh, out of the way. So we're working very hard on that uh, at the moment. Cool. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question maybe. Yep, there's one over here. Okay, uh, hello. Uh, I love the way how you have done the, the deploy in the cloud. That's really a nice piece of software. And I have kind of a reverse question for you. Uh, so what's the plan on the deploy for the on-premise? And uh, how it will be handled with the, with the courier? So we will have to migrate everything to Umbraco 8 to support deploy instead of courier, or what's your plans on that, on, yeah. on that topic? Yeah, I don't know yet what kind of support uh, we will have from uh, deploy on-premise for before 8. I know it will be the platform deploy-wise that you can use from 8 and going forward, but we don't yet have a decision on what will happen before 8. Um, so for starters, it will certainly be a tool and an option to use for your 8 project to get deployment option between environments also outside of Umbraco Cloud. That's, that's the most I can say about it at this point. But as soon as we know more, of course, we will we'll share it through the website. Okay. Thanks. You want to do one more, Andrew? I think you had one queued up. Yeah, we, let, let's do one more. Yeah. Just, just one. Yep. And then any other questions? We've got that wonderful cloud lab. And I saw it over here somewhere. Right here. Uh, hi. Um, I'm from Iceland, and we're, we have some big clients. And we're kind of moving it from our self-hosting to Azure. And for some of our smaller ones, we might be considering using these uh, these hostings. But 
we're using Azure DevOps, and apparently you're not integrated with that yet, and we're waiting for that. Yep. Uh, but as soon as the .NET Core feature will come in, we're going to use containers instantly. Are you going to be um, well, up to date? Are you going to be? Are we going to be using containers? Yeah. Is, is what you're asking? Yeah. Um, how we end up structuring uh, what's powering the sites underneath can end up in many different directions. Containers is definitely some of the things that we are looking at. And of course, uh, the switch to .NET Core is also a huge advantage for us because it, it is a great leap in terms of what we can do hosting-wise going forward. So we, as hosting on Abraco Cloud, are also looking forward to, to the switch to .NET Core. But we also have a big range of different things that we have to do. And you have to remember that today we support uh, seven sites. Uh, I can't even remember what version number we're back to, but not all are running fresh and new Umbraco. Even though we provide tools, there's still some that do not uh, have the latest version running. So, so our landscape will be pretty scattered. We will have very different kinds of things to cater to. So, so exactly how that will end up, uh, I can't really say for sure. But, but I can say for sure that we are on the forefront on what needs to happen next and of course taking the platform forward uh, as it provides value for you as a user but also as it provides value for us as the provider. Great. Uh, and with that we can uh, thank I guess our wonderful presenters Anders and Jacob for their time. Thank you very much. <laughs>